Elon Musk is optimistically uncertain about Starship getting to orbit. Multiple dragons are preparing to head up as parts of their trunks come down. Falcon shoots for the moon, and we finish with today's honorable mentions. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. All road closures for this week were canceled, but SpaceX has been hard at it, prepping stage zero at the Starbase launch site for some Starship and booster static fires, followed by the highly anticipated fully stacked orbital launch, which Elon believes will happen successfully between one and 12 months from now. In other words, within the first five or so attempts. Starship 24 currently sits upon suborbital pad B, and yesterday evening its water deluge system was tested. Possible closures for next week's static fire are posted. Crews also took the week to continue building up the fleet. Starship 25, 26, and 27 are under construction up Highway 4, as well as boosters 10, 9, and 8, which may or may not replace booster 7. Polaris Dawn has also been busy preparing for their trip to orbit, which according to Isaacman, who appeared at the Experimental Aircraft Association's Air Venture Air Show in Wisconsin, could likely be December. Isaacman also reported that he got pressurized in the EVA development suit, but no pictures to share yet. Mission pilot Kid Poteet shared some pictures of the team training in the altitude chamber, as well as time spending in the centrifuge. I got to interview Poteet a few months back about the mission. You can check out our conversation here, or it's also linked at the end of this video. The next Crew Dragon mission is Crew 5, which includes two Americans, one Japanese, and the first Russian to ride in Dragon's Tum Tums. NASA just shared a video compilation of some of the training they have been going through as they prepare for liftoff, slated no earlier than the end of next month. Over the weekend, a couple of farmers in New South Wales, Australia, were surprised when space debris re-entered the atmosphere over the continent and impaled itself across their properties. SpaceX's own Benji confirmed they are parts of Crew 1's trunk launched back in November of 2020. This comes after two pieces of debris were found by other nearby farmers early last month on July 9th, but no sheep were smashed in either case. Concerning Starlink, SpaceX has released an update of their efforts to mitigate the brightness of their satellites. The company is focused on reducing reflection from the sun's incident light. For their first-gen Starlink sats, SpaceX tried sun visors that blocked the light from reflecting off the bottom of the spacecraft, but those caused too much drag at the low altitude Starlinks are deployed at. So instead, they developed dielectric mirror film to specularly scatter most of the sunlight away from Earth. And they'll be using a new and improved film for Starlink version 2s to launch on Starship, which is 10 times better at reducing brightness than the previous version. The company is also offering to sell this product to other operators. They have also placed darkened material between the solar cells on the front of the solar arrays, which does increase temperature and reduce performance of the satellites, but it's a concession the company is willing to make, as well as having their craft perform Terminator tracking maneuvers while flying over the Earth's day-night line, which does result in a 25% reduction in power for the satellites, but again, SpaceX is willing to do it in the name of being good stewards. Most other smaller components on the second-gen satellites will be coated with an internally developed low-reflectivity black paint, which has a five times lower specular peak compared to the darkest available space-stable paint. But SpaceX says no engineering model is perfect, so they will continue to work with the astronomy community. In yesterday, SpaceX launched a refurbished Falcon Heavy side booster on another Falcon 9 mission for its sixth overall for South Korea's Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter. And while it wasn't SpaceX's first payload to be shot to the moon, Israel's unsuccessful Beresheet moon lander was part of a rideshare that went to the moon in 2019, KPLO was SpaceX's first dedicated moon mission. Just sending it, bro, to our natural satellite via a slower ballistic lunar transfer. And so long as everything goes according to Pran, the satellite will orbit the moon in December so it can scout out a flat landing spot for a future Korean landing mission. And by the way, the booster did successfully land on Just Read the Instructions, bobbing on the Atlantic. But now it's time for today's Honorable Mentions. Thursday was a busy day for launching rockets. Not only did KPLO lift off, but earlier that morning, ULA blasted one of their Atlas Vs to space for the sixth and final space-based infrared system geosynchronous Earth orbit spacecraft for the Space Force. Rocket Lab took off from New Zealand to deliver on a contract for the National Reconnaissance Office, and Blue Origin provided their sixth joyride to space for six customers. including the first individuals from Egypt and Portugal to go to space, as well as one of the Dude Perfect Dudes. Yeah, guys, we're doing it! The giant virus booster once again showing off an aesthetically pleasing landing in the West Texas desert. Wow, 
followed by shoots bra and a soft poof down in the dust. That's all for today. Thanks for stopping by to see me. Shout out to my local supporters watching my six. You too can join Team Freedom by using the link provided below. We have a nominal weekend. And until next time, Godspeed.